So hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA platformer tutorial. So in this tutorial we are just gonna be tweaking and optimizing um a, a couple things. Uh so so let's just get into this uh quickly. So um if we look at our tile sheet, our tile set wait for it to load so we have a transparent tile right and that's represented by in our map as a coordinate zero zero uh it, it's cool if we do it that way but the problem is that we're just drawing a bunch of null transparent tiles that have nothing to do with anything right and uh we don't we don't want to do that right uh, so instead of just wasting all this data on blank tiles, why not just make it that the tiles they won't be set to any type of tile, right? And if they want not, if they're not set to any type of tile, then we're gonna be saving data that we're using in memory. And what I mean by that is this: so we're just gonna highlight this uh, in Visual Studio. Click Control H. We're gonna say replace zero zero i'm just gonna replace it with th three dashes okay and uh that has replaced it okay so replace zero zero with that okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new property we're gonna say load equals uh let's just put null null tile and a null tile is equal to that Okay, so if we ever see this tile, then we know it is a null tile. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our layer. So in our layer, our layer is what loads, uh, what loads everything, right? And what we have to do, first of all, is we have to create something so we'll call this uh, null tile and we got to create a variable for this so we'll just create a uh, string variable easy enough and if we run to that then we'll set null tile equal to contents ij and we'll put a break okay uh, so right here oh uh, now now we uh this is where we actually load in the 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 stuff right so what we're gonna say is uh if contents i is not equal to null tile then we do all this right here and should it is it like this or it should be contents i k sorry so if contents i k is not equal to null tile then it's going to do all this right so as a result instead of getting a whole bunch of tiles created we're only going to get we're only going to get uh, uh only the tiles that we actually need to be created so let us um let me just see where we or where we end this for loop yeah, so we're just gonna put a uh, let's just put a breakpoint there. So let's run this program, and if we see the tiles, oh wait, let's put this out here. Okay, so we gotta index. Uh, we gotta index out of range, and oh, the reason for this. The reason for this error is because we're setting it uh, for temp files K, but we're not always gonna be creating. Uh, we're not always gonna be creating something, right? Um, we're not always gonna be creating a tile. So instead of doing temp tiles K, because in this case, in this instance, every single time it looped, it was gonna create a new tile, so it was gonna be equal to the value of K. In this case, though, we'll just put temp tiles dot count minus one. Easy fix. And when we go here, the tiles we created, we only created 15 tiles, right? Uh, and we can see it like so. So 
So when we run this program here, should move all this. So we got the tiles drawn, only the tiles that we actually need to draw, those are the tiles that are being drawn. So, so let's see right here. So let's go to tiles draw right here. And uh, we can see the, the different tiles that are drawn. So one other thing though, so since we are since we are doing it this way and we're doing it this method, right? Remember that each individual tile has its own position. So in this case, we don't even need to have uh, a two-dimensional list of tiles. We can have a one-dimensional list, right? And we'll do 1D list of tiles. And we'll just change this right here. So we got that there. So instead of doing this right here, we'll just put tiles. We'll change this 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 here to tiles. So we can get rid of this. We can say tile tiles that add new tile. So where's temp tiles? So we can get rid of this. and everything should remain the same so in here we don't need to have the double for loop we can just have a single for loop and just say tiles i dot update get rid of this uh for the update collision and uh same for the draw okay so we can get rid of this And draw it like so. So if we re debug this program again, we'll get the same thing as we had before, right? Because our tiles position is stored inside our um in our tile instance, right? So it doesn't matter if we do it in an, in an array style format, uh it's still gonna be drawn at the correct position. So if we go to tiles dot draw and we can see the count, so we have we have 29 tiles, or so it says, it says the count is equal to 29. So we have 29 different tiles that we are, are indeed drawing. So let's go and check our map file quickly. So if we can count the amount of tiles we need to draw, so this right here, how wide is this? I think it's 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have exactly 29 tiles that we're drawing, and it completely ignores these tiles. So uh, we, only create, we only create the tiles that we actually need to draw. We don't create the tiles that we don't need to draw. So that's another thing that boosts it, um, efficiently. Instead of drawing 20 by 10, so instead of creating 200 different tile instances, we only need to create 29 since we're only drawing 29. So that makes sense and it's, it's better for optimization. Uh, since we're also not using the collision class, might as well just make space with our, um, with our, with our map code and just uh, get rid of that, okay? So let's see how much uh, time we have in this tutorial. Okay, so let's just run this to make sure it works again. And we're going to do one after this test. Yeah, so after this test, we're going to do something else quickly uh, just to make our lives easier. So if we go to our file manager class, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, so we'll, what we what we always do is that we ask for attributes and um, we ask for contents in here, right? Instead of doing that, what we're going to do is just get rid of this. And um, we're going to get rid of this in, in the load content. I have a save content method here. Don't worry about it. This is for a future tutorial. I was just testing it out. So we can get rid of this right here. And you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to... Now, we'll save that for the uh, next tutorial. So we're, we're just going to get rid of this right here. Uh, since time is limited. So what we're going to do is... 
we're good we're gonna make a two-dimensional list of attributes and contents okay and right here we'll just set or we, we, we can just make a file manager constructor and we'll set the attributes equal to a new list and the contents equal to a new list and then what we would do is we could make a public two-dimensional list to our attributes and we can put set and same for our values uh, for our contents Uh, what's wrong? Oh. So for our contents, uh, we'll do the same thing. We return contents. Okay, and then everywhere that we, we need to get that data, right? So we can get rid of all this all these stuff right here so anywhere that we need to get our attributes our count and everything all we have to do is put file manager dot attributes dot count so for every class that we need to use a file manager we don't need to create a list of attributes and content anymore we don't need to do that anymore because uh, the file manager takes care of that for us so we can get rid of this right here. Um, so we can call file manager dot attributes i, and it's easy as it's easy as pie. So uh, we're running out of time for this video. So I'm relying on you to convert it for the rest of your classes that um, uh, that need to that need to be modified so do that and then i hope you look forward to the next tutorial so thanks for watching this hope you enjoyed it and bye